So here's the scenario. You said to yourself that you were going to work on a specific project for the next hour. You even set a timer, but then the message alert dings on your phone. So you quickly answered the question that someone asked about an upcoming event that you're having. You get back to work on your project, but then you remember that you have to answer an email to a potential client sent really late yesterday afternoon. So you open up your Gmail account and you quickly answer the inquiry. After that, you go back to work on your project for a few minutes and then you decide that you don't like the way the area around your desk looks and you start to clean it up. So you take a, just a few minutes to straighten it up. You go back to your work on that project and then your alarm goes off that the hour is over and you think, where did the time go? Have I just described you being busy and not being productive in your business? You sit down with the best of intentions, but find yourself not getting things accomplished in the way that you thought you would. We're going to look at three things. One, how to get productive and not just stay busy. Two, how to keep motivated and not lose your concentration. And three, how to stop distractions, stay consistent and get more accomplished. Join me. Focus, planning, routine. What do you feel when I say these words? Do you wish that you had more focus in your business? Do you know you need to have more planning to get more done? Do you recognize that a better routine will actually make you more productive? Hey there, my wise entrepreneurial spirited woman. This is Deneen TV and I have helped many women go from that distraction and indecision to really transition into the perfect business that God is calling them into. So make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. So how did you feel about the scenario that I opened with? It came from a real situation that I had with a client. We have a co-working time each week inside of a Zoom room. And every time we set our intentions of what we're going to work on, and we actually say it aloud to all the others in the room before we get started. When we come back together at the end of that hour to talk about what got accomplished and really celebrate the progress, right? And it's very motivating. The client, let's call her Susan, really complained one session that she didn't finish what she said she wanted to accomplish during that time frame. So I specifically asked her what happened. She then proceeded to list all the things that she allowed to distract her. The alerts, the thoughts, the environment. This incidentally is actually what inspired me to do this actual video. <laughs> so how can you get productive and not just stay busy. You know, Susan was busy in her business during that entire hour, but she wasn't very productive. This is where we wanna talk about the word focus. Where there is focus, there is direction. Susan's problem was that she had all these great intentions, but allowed the squirrel brain to take over. And I know you've probably experienced this before. Focus requires really that you ignore everything else that may be going on for just that amount of time that you've purposed to work. So there are some very practical ways to do this when you want to have a focused work time. First, turn off or silence all of the alerts, the dings, the pop-ups that normally come onto your phone or even onto your computer. You do not have to answer everyone the very second the message comes through. It's actually more professional if you don't. Second, have a sticky note or a notepad to the, your side, right there where you can write. I'm left-handed, so it's to my left. If you have that intrusive thought that comes in or something that you remember you have to do, an idea pops into your head, just take a second and write it down on the paper and let it go. You now have it recorded, and so now your brain doesn't have to think about it anymore, and you can actually move on. And third, literally ignore your environment. It's not important that all of your papers are filed, all of your pens are in the holder, or that your floor needs to be vacuumed. 
focus on the task at hand. Write down a time in your calendar when you will clean up the space and stick to doing the thing that you're doing right now that you've purposed. Now, these ideas are really just a start. Do you really have any other distractions that you need a remedy for? Let me know down in the comments and see if I can brainstorm a little bit with you to see if we can get you a solution for your normal distractions. There are many moving pieces to your business. And giving yourself a focused time to really complete or progress on a project that you know will serve your clients, will get you more potential clients to know who you are, or lead to more sales is really important to your business than just trying to keep up with the everyday demands. Start to be more responsive than reactive in your business. Take more control of your business by determining when you will do what, those things that need to get done. Choose a time and what you will work on. So this leads us into how do you keep motivated and not lose concentration? Since the first session with Susan, she has gotten better at using her time wisely when we have co-working every single week. She has done that by having a plan. <laughs> By taking the time to create a plan, you give yourself the best advantage of accomplishing the goal, that project, the thing that, the thing that you said you were going to do. Many of your projects will probably take more than just one focus session to complete, and that's okay. You can stay motivated as you complete each segment or each part of the plan. And if you find yourself not able to concentrate during your focus session, it may be that your plan just needs to be adjusted. If you're thinking, how will I get all of this done in this amount of time? Then really what you've done is you've bitten off more than you can chew, so to speak, for that session. It's not about working harder or faster. It's about learning how much you can actually accomplish in just one session. Remember, Slow and steady wins the race. Slow and steady work will get your goals accomplished, your projects completed, and your business growing. I have found that eight weeks of planning are a great way to break down projects into those bite-sized pieces. It's not overwhelming when you know which piece you're going to work on, and when you finish it, you check it off, you're motivated to do the next piece. In this video, I explain what I call deconstructing the hamburger. And by showing you how to break down those projects into those bite-sized pieces. So I'll put that link down in the description too so you can get all of those details and start deconstructing the hamburger for yourself. We're all doing um, this co-working thing for eight weeks because I love eight weeks, so no surprise there. In eight weeks, many pieces can be checked off, can be completed. So you're saying maybe to yourself, well, Denise, all those business books, they say that you should work 12 weeks. Why not an entire quarter? Well, this was my experience trying to do that many years ago. Um, I don't know if it's because I'm a woman or a mom or someone who has household responsibilities or, or what it actually is. But when I tried to work within that 12-week framework, that entire quarter, the last four weeks always seemed to be off because of what happened in the first eight weeks of the quarter. So I decided that I was going to work just in that eight week framework and it's really been proven to be my best way to work, the best way that I can stay focused and I've taught it to other people because it helps me to continue to be productive and it keeps you, myself, motivated doing it that way. The last thing I want to answer here is how do you stop distractions, stay consistent and get more accomplished? So. So far, what we've done is we've looked at some of the short-term ways to stop distractions. We also talked about staying consistent and motivated with a plan. Now let's talk about how that actually translates into getting more accomplished. Here's the word, it is routine. I think this is one of my favorite words for business. You know, all successful people have a routine. The trick is to create a routine that works for you and for your life, your lifestyle. You cannot follow someone else's routine and expect the same results. Let me back up for a minute though. Do you need to have some of the same elements as successful people to be successful? Yes, but do they have to be done in the same way? No. 
The more that you can create routines for yourself, the more that you actually train your brain to take away distractions and help you to concentrate so that you can be more productive. Sounds like a miracle, right? <laughs> well, in some ways, it actually is. When you create a routine, you know what you're going to do and when you're going to do it. The what and the when, right? It becomes almost automatic. This actually frees your brain again for more creativity and give it what it really needs, rest. Because you know, your brain is always looking for ways to save energy. I call it the CFO, the chief financial officer of your body. If you do not give your brain times of rest and recharge, it will shut down on you. Have you ever tried to work on a project and it just seems like you are pulling teeth to get it done? You just cannot seem to think anymore. That's your brain saying, it's had enough. I've had enough. A routine that includes breaks is only your first step. When you have a routine and have planned how much you want to accomplish each day, you really don't feel guilty for not getting done all those other things. Your routine dictates what will happen on any given day. There is real power in routine. I will just say it again. There is real power in routine. Now, it doesn't mean that every single day is going to look exactly the same. It means that you have dedicated work times, play times, relax times, and responsibility times. These times go with your design, how you function, and with your life, how you function with others. Your routine also changes as the circumstances change in your life. Since I do not have children anymore who are small or in the house, my daily routine revolves more around how I am designed. Since I'm a morning person, there are certain tasks like writing I always do first thing because my brain is at its best. Now, I have a tool that can help you kind of brainstorm through all the things that you are doing in your life right now and begin to make decisions about what you want your weekly and your daily routine to look like. I call it Simplify Your Day, and you can click on it in the description to start to really construct, to create your perfect routine. So, how are you feeling at this point? You may be saying, I can't do this. You just don't know how chaotic things are. You know, I've never been able to work this way. Okay, let's reframe those thoughts right now. I want you to say this to yourself if something like that comes into your head. You could say things like, I have never put focus, planning, and routine into my business before, but we're going to reframe it. I can start small by just setting a timer for one hour and working on something that is waiting to get done. Just start with something small that has really been sitting on the back burner of your business. I would love to hear all about what you're going to do, what you're going to work on. Let me know that down in the comments. Are you stuck? Are you not knowing how to get out of the place that you are in in your business? I invite you to make an appointment with me. Let's chat. The call is free and there's no obligation. Let's see if I'm the one to help you get focused, motivated, and consistent in your God-centered business. Thanks so much for being here. Make sure to like the video, comment about your distractions and what you're going to work on, and don't forget to subscribe. This is Deneen TV. Have a great rest of your day, and as always, be filled to overflowing.